hello, I'm Gail Monago. I'm the facilitator for the El Paso Independent School District Fine Arts Office, and I'd like to welcome you to another edition of our Focus on the Arts as we pre present this monthly program allowing you to have an opportunity and insight into our visual arts, music, theater, arts, and dance programs in the district. Today with me, I have Julio Castillo. He's our instrumental facilitator, as well as Elvin Porflet, choir director at Jefferson Silva High School. We're gonna be talking a little bit about the Texas Music Educators All-State process. Uh, we have some ex outstanding news to share with you about the uh, recent accomplishments. Um, and we also have um, an introduction or a brief overview about our instrument repair shop as well. So I thank you both for joining me today. That's our pleasure. Um, Julio, tell me a little bit about your responsibilities as the instrumental facilitator. As the instrumental facilitator, I look over the, um, get to oversee the band programs in the district as well as the orchestra and the guitar programs. One thing that we always like to do is we certainly like to um, um, give a lot of our programs the, the spotlight, th those that are certainly very successful, and also continue to support the, the programs that, uh, that continue to, to grow throughout the, the district. We're very fortunate to have um, quite a number of programs that are very successful. Great. Well, in our last two shows, we were able to showcase <coughs> some of our bands as we had the marching band events and so on. Um, and we also, a few of them, part well, eight of the nine bands, I believe, participated in the Correct. Thanksgiving, the Thanksgiving parade. parade. Uh, we, we always rotate our groups, and so we were for very fortunate this year to have eight of our ten high schools um, participate, and so that, that that's always a blast for the uh, for the kids. I know that it's a it takes up the uh, one day for the for the adults, but it's always about the kids, and the kids certainly end up having a, a, a great time enjoying the uh, that uh, performance. And it turns out that Franklin, our one of our local high schools, uh, took the uh, the um, award for the best marching unit in the uh, in the Snubble Parade. Oh, that's wonderful! How exciting! Um, Elvin, and you have had students that participated and are members of the Texas Music Educators All Region. How many students from Jefferson Silva made the All Region Choir? Between the mixed and the girls choir, we've had 26. That's great. Yes, when we talk about a mixed choir, what are we talking about? Mixed is a prime alto tenor bass, so you have guys and girls, and the treble is only women. And then yeah, there is also a men's ensemble as well. How is that comprised? Well, when you get to all state, then you have the men, but for region here, um, we, we don't have the men's choir yet, but that's a good idea. It's not a separate, did we have some, do you have just the men from the mixed group sing a couple of songs? Well, they, they do, they do have a, um, whatever they learn for the audition process. They go ahead and sing those two songs for the concert, but they're still part of the mixed choir. That's great. So the auditions were held in October. We had great, um, great success there with the region. And then they go to the pre-area choir. What is that exactly? Well, it's not really a choir. It's just the next set of auditions. And so what happens is the region students compete against each other, and the top five chairs, um, they get to go audition for state. And then that's when it's a choir again. And they get some of the best singers from all of Texas to sing together. That's wonderful. And all of us just returned from Midland, audition, Midland mm -hmm. to for the area auditions. It was band and choir. But I understand, Julio, the orchestra actually had the all-state auditions. How is that done? Uh, th that's that's done through a, a similar process, except that they don't. Uh, the students, when they audition, they don't audition live. It's a uh, it's an audio taped uh, performance, and so apparently the the uh, judges are flown into um, Austin, or I think several parts of the, the area where they, they listen to the to the tapes. And in fact, Mr. Angerstein is also part of that panel, who happens to be our our uh, fine arts director. He's part of that panel. He says it's a very rigorous process, two-day process, and so they uh, eliminate. Uh, the, 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 the kids, that, that's the process of elimination. Apparently there are, I think, four or 500 tapes that, that, that are submitted uh, at the state level. And so that, that, that's, a, that's a little bit uh, different process than what we have with, with, uh, band, with band and choir. Of course, the kids get to audition uh, during the live process. And so it's not as, it's not as lengthy as the, as, the, as the strings. Except that we had two students that made it to the jazz ensemble, the actual all-state jazz band. Now they did not audition in at the area auditions. Tell me about that. Correct. Th that, that is also a, uh, that's not a live per, uh, uh, audition, that is a taped audition. Two of our students that made it, one from uh, Franklin and another, the other student uh, was from Chapin, and they'll get to travel with us in February to, to Allstate. That uh, process, as I said, is a, a recording process, uh, and that uh, took place back in, in uh, I think, the first week in, um, 
in September, in September right? and then th they had the live auditions and then the recordings took place in November and we were very fortunate to pick up two students and so it turns out that we, we have a total of nine students traveling to, to state in, in, in February that, that will be representing uh, El Paso ISD. That's wonderful. So we had the two in jazz, we have two in orchestra, and they came one from El Paso High. One from El Paso High and, and one, one from Coronado. From that's Coronado, great. that's, that's great. great. And congratulations to you, Elvin, because um, we are going to, uh, we understand we have four students that made it into the choir, but two of them, you have two from Jefferson. Oh, yes, ma'am. Well, from Coronado, Lauren Lozano is a sophomore, and she did fantastic. And also Edward Rodriguez from Irvin, he was a second chair in the mixed choir. So he was outstanding. But from our school, we had Nadia and, um, and Jerry. But the other two you saw, plus some others that we had, were right there with them. That's and wonderful. so um, hopefully in the next few years, we'll be representing El Paso on even a higher level with more students in there. But that, that's great. So we have the choirs at the Allstate, we have the mixed choir. That's the highest. Yes, ma'am. How did they select? How did those students get selected, actually? Well, for the men, they have from each area, 20 to 25 students auditioning. Right. And that's after weeding them out through the region district processes. Okay. And so for the men, they pick the top four for the mixed choir and the next four for the men's choir. For the women, they have the top four for the mix and the top six for the treble choir. That's fantastic. And I understand that the University of Texas at El Paso Fine Arts Department, um, Dr. William McMillan, Bill McMillan, he hosts an all-state clinic in the summer. and. Uh, tell us a little bit about that because you assist with that, do you not? Yes, I do. Um, we have some of the, minus myself, some of the best teachers. I'm not saying I'm one of the best ones, but we got some I extraordinary teachers great. that help clinic it. But Dr. McMillan, he's um, one of the most friendliest um, professors you can have at a university because he's not, scared. he's not like, well, he loves coming down to the high schools. I've, I've asked him to come down and work with my kids, and he's down there anytime I ask and he's there to, to help us out any way he can. He judges, he does everything he can just to promote the music program in El Paso. And so um, during the summer, he um, does this camp. He doesn't really get paid anything and he organizes the whole thing and he, um, and he gets us to help out. And we usually have 60 to 100 kids to show up. We show up every day from nine to three and we learn all the music, get a head start on it. That's we great. do some skits and minor legendary. I don't like to brag, but I've got you know some great skits with the bass section. Just look them up on YouTube, and um, <laughs> and also um, we we put on a concert at the end, and um, and just to show off what the kids can do. But the kids got an extra two months of head start on that music, and um, the the two that made it were were part of it, and and we had many students that went, and so it's a very very great camp to go to. That's great. So in February we were going to San Antonio, Texas, for the Texas Music That's Educators. Cool. Um, music convention and featuring the band, orchestra, and choir, all state organizations. But there's other opportunities for us, um, and the students actually get to participate. That tell us a little bit about that convention. What the students will be involved in? The, so some of the kids, well, actually, the the rehearsals throughout the throughout the day. Um, there are rigorous rehearsals, long rehearsals to prepare the, the kids for their for their presentations. And those presentations, I, I'm by by far the best. You're talking about kids um, that begin the process in September, well over. 10,000 kids mm -hmm. and by the time they get to TMEA they, they've dwindled down to I'd say two three hundred students and these are by far the best students throughout the state from select programs so just to be named uh, or be selected to this uh, to this TMEA to the all-state process is certainly a, a, a standard that, that is far surpasses uh, uh, anyone else um, and I know that, that the, the rest of the country looks to, to Texas for for uh, some type of idea to see what else, how else they, they can model their state uh, programs. But um, as I said, to, to, to be selected um, to the all-state level is just, uh, it, it, it uh, reflects their talent and, and, and their, 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 um, their, hard, their hard work and, and, and dedication to the, to the program. That's great. Can I, um, Elvin, get you to tell me a little bit about your choir program there at Jefferson. Um, yes, I know that the Texas Music Educators choirs are about 280 people. It starts off the process with about 50,000 50, students across the state. Uh, but your students at Jefferson um, are not, they're not unfamiliar in singing in a large ensemble. Can you just tell me a little bit about your program? Oh, that's it, yeah. My, um, right now we're at about 315 students and um, we, We've got, I mean, some phenomenal singers, and we've got, um, you, you can just walk into a class of 65 or 70, and you'll feel energy. That's, that's where our difference is between um, a lot of electives or a lot of, you know, um, just programs in us, is that there's just this energy about it. 
The students are, in, are active all the time. They're singing, they're laughing, usually at me, but they're laughing and they're <laughs> um, just having a great time. And so even though there's a lot of learning going on, there's a lot of um, just, just energy. And that's the only way to describe what we have going on at Jefferson Silva High School. Well, we have a special treat and we have four students from your Jefferson Silva Choir. Of two of them, you'll get to see Nadia El Escandrani and Jerry Mora, who made the All State Choir. They are going to be performing. Let's listen. <laughs> Genitum non factum, non factum, consultam si halim parte, per quem monia, mortas onia, per quem monia, onia, partas un pro, e prote nos, e prote nos homines, e prote nos, tram nos, tram salutem, te scendi, te scendis, te scendis, te When I fall in love, it will be Before we talk to the students from Jefferson Silva Choir, directed by Elvin Porflet, I'd like to share another wonderful aspect about our fine arts office. It's our instrument repair shop. Recently, the, the El Paso Independent School District TV studio did a video taping of the shop. Let's take a look. We have the uh, only repair shop in the state that's this big. I mean, there's, there's a couple of other districts that have uh, a repair shop that only employ maybe one or two people. We employ seven and, and uh, we expanded it to all instruments, strings, woodwinds, pianos, uh, any, any instrument we have a repairman that, that can fix. They're very specialized. I mean, there's no one in El Paso that really can fix our instruments. And uh, even the music stores, Sometimes they go out and moonlight at the mu music stores at night when they're not working here. And so the repairs that are done at music stores are actually by our guys. Um, and, and like I said before, we do have uh, a repair shop that's unique from uh, the entire state. Um, we have people that come from, or that want to, that have been calling us, wanting to come down to see how and what it takes to have a repair shop like ours. My specialty is brass and percussion. This is, if you've ever been in any other shops, this is very nice. Other, pl other places envy us because we have the space here and uh, we, we have uh, room to keep all these little parts to where 90% of these little parts that we keep we'll never use, but you never know which 90, which 10% you're gonna use. So you, you don't throw them away, you want to keep them. So you can have all these uh, parts to access and, and any other shop would be real small and they won't have all the tools that we have and it cramp, cramped workspaces, it, it just slows you down. And uh, you know, it's nice to be in a space like this. Sometimes you'll do four instruments in a day, four or five in a day, very simple stuff. And other, other times you can spend 10 hours on one instrument. 
as you can see, things can fall inside here. I've, I've found shoes in here, candy bars, uh, toys, um, tool, uh, little tools and stuff that you find inside the instrument, and it can be very difficult getting them out. And you all, in an instrument, you have to check the instrument for obstructions. You have to check and make sure there's nothing stuck in there. Or the instrument won't sound right. You have to have respect for the instrument. Don't, I've seen kids throw them around, uh, damage them on purpose. If you're gonna do that, you, I'm sorry, you don't belong in band. You have to, the, the, the instrument has, a, almost has a life of its own and you have to, you must respect the instrument. Now, we're most proud of being the only facility in the state, for one thing, that's like this. I mean, there's, there's no other repair shop that, that can even match ours. I'm most proud of our guys, because our guys, they fix sometimes instruments that think, people would think unfixable, and they do miracles with our instruments. So I'm glad they're here, and they, they, they come up with innovative ways to fix instruments. This was the old Zach White School. We took it over. And, and uh, it's an older building, we took over the gym. Uh, our entire gym is the repair shop. You know, our guys are just invaluable. I mean, just like uh, I was talking about that, there's no one like them in the, in the city. They, they're specialized, they, they, they fix uh, the instruments that no one else could do. They, they do a job here that, uh, uh, that's unmatched anywhere in the state. So I'm really proud of our guys. That was wonderful. I thoroughly enjoyed your performance. But I don't think I've introduced you all. So let me start with you. Annette Sanchez, right? You yes, are a junior. What yes. voice part do you sing? I sing alto. You sing alto. That's great. And David Torres, you are a sophomore? Yes, ma'am. And what part do you sing? I sing uh, bass baritone. Bass baritone. Okay. Difference between bass and baritone? Uh, well, baritone is just a, a little bit higher than the bass. Bass is the, the lowest voice part. Ah, great. So. Great. And then we have Nadia Elescantrani. Yes. And you are a junior. Yes, ma'am. Yes, that's wonderful. What part do you sing? Um, I'm a soprano, high so soprano. High soprano? Yes. Different than a low soprano. First yes. soprano, is yes. that what it's called? Yes. Okay, great. And we have Jerry Mora, and you are a sophomore as well. Yes, ma'am. And what part do you sing? I sing tenor. Well, you all did a fantastic job, and I thoroughly enjoyed your recent pr uh, performance at the school board meeting back in December. That was wonderful. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. I'd just like to ask you a few questions about Jefferson Silva High School Choir. Um, Annette, how long have you been in choir? Um, I've been in choir at Jeff for two years. For two years? Yes. That's great. And David? Uh, I've been uh, singing choir since I was a, a freshman, so two years also. Okay, and I understand that you don't just sing in the Jefferson Silva Choir, you've also been singing with uh, Bruce Nearing Consort? Is yes, ma'am. Yes, that's, that's correct. Have you enjoyed doing that? Oh, well, I just love um, kind of dis diversifying like my different um, the different options I have um, to outreach to the community. And I think like any opportunity I get to sing, um, I'm there. That's great, so. that's great. And Nadia, how long have you been singing? Um, I've been singing since I was really little. I was about seven, six or seven. But I've been in choir at Jeff for three years now, going on three years. Okay, and I understand that you sang in some operas, is yes. that right, when was, you were young? Yes, ma'am. I was in three operas, and I was like the little kids that were They'd sing, but they were like the little kids' choir. Mm -hmm. I was part of that. And so were you in the chorus, or did you actually have some roles? I had a role in one of them. Really? Yes, as I got older. Oh, that's great. That's great. I know. I, I hope that we'll get to hear, hear you all yes. um, more as well. And Jerry, how long have you been singing now? I've been um, shower singing since I was a little boy. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. <laughs> Other than that, I've been singing in the Jefferson Civil Choir for about two years now, since my freshman year. I did... Um, not attend choir back in Henderson, okay. but I did sing with Nova, no, Noel Novoa. Neil Novoa, yeah. uh-huh. Neil Novoa. Oh, that's wonderful, that's wonderful. Um, all of you were part, uh, participants, are actually members of the Allstate, uh, excuse me, not Allstate, the Texas Music Educators All-Region Choir, yes. Yes, and then you advanced to area, so you just came back from Midland, Odessa. Yes, How was that trip? Uh, Nett, you want to tell us a little bit it about that trip? It was so exciting. I met so many new people. It was a really great experience. That's awesome. And part of the auditions, um, you sang one of the first songs that you sang for us 
uh, what was the title of that piece, David? The Credo. The um, Credo yeah. from the Coronation Mass? Yes, ma'am. That's right. That was one of the audition pieces for Area. Yes, ma'am. And what else did you have to do at Area, Nadia? Oh, there was a lot of preparation. Um, there was two pieces, and one of the pieces was in three parts, and it was the Coronation Mass and the Nuntimitis. And we sang cuts from those two songs, or those two movements. And then we later went on to sight read. And they give you a piece of music you've never seen before. And you have to sight read it and get perfect scores. So in that sight reading process, actually, they just give you the starting, they give you the tonic triad, yes. the do, mi, so, yes. um, and then the starting pitch. And how, what's the preparation time? How many seconds? Um, they give you 30 seconds to prepare. And you can sing, do whatever you please, and then go ahead and get started. That's great. So Jerry, that was your first time really to, to do that other than at the pre-area auditions to do the sight reading, right? No, I did this in freshman year as well. Ah, you did last year. That, that's great. So how is how do you prepare for that sight reading? Countless hours of sight reading music, <laughs> um, a lot of choral setting music. That helps a lot when you play guitar and you sight read a lot. It, just come, it clicks in as, it, as you go. That's great. Well, I understand then, and congratulations to you, Jerry, because you've made the All-State Men's Choir, Thank correct? You. Yes. And then, Nadia, this is your second year, yes. and you made the All-State Women's. Women's Choir. Yes, How was your experience at All-State last year? It was a lot of fun. I met a lot of people. I still keep in contact with them. I still talk to them. But it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of hours, too, like waking up like at the wee hours in the morning and then staying till really late, but it's really worth it. I think the work is worth it. So at the Allstate um, convention, it will be held in February in San Antonio. Have you, David or Annette, have you all been to San Antonio before? Oh yeah. Yes, yes mm -hmm. you have been. Um, and one thing that's really exciting about the Allstate organizations is that you rehearse for three days. Is that right, Nadia? Yes. Is that right? Rehearse for three days and you work with a clinician. You all have had some opportunities, I understand, to work with other people uh, before. So what's, what's it like to actually be in a large ensemble? How many, how many members are in the Jefferson Choir? Um, um, wow, a lot. I'd say over like 200. About 200. So you're yeah. accustomed <clears throat> to that a little bit, but most of our choirs are not. They are familiar with singing, oh, 60, 70 people yeah. and so on. Um, tell me a little bit about the Jefferson choirs. Do you have only one choir, David? Do you only have oh, one? Oh, well, choir? we have um, different choirs, actually. Um, Porphylet, um has different periods for his choirs because there's so many people, mm -hmm. right? You can't fit 200 people in a room and uh, tell them to start singing. So um, what we have is uh, our choir, which is the chamber choir. Um, and then you also have um, his other choirs and, and also a, a woman's choir. A woman's so. choir. Okay. And so are you in the same class periods, Nadia? Are you all in the chamber choir? Yes, we're all in the chamber choir. Okay. But then you, because you're going to be involved in the women's choir, yep. uh, tell me about that. What's the repertoire or the, or the music like? Um, well, he's barely getting it started. So... Well, I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure he's going to pick some great music for us that all of us can sing. Okay. But for the women's choir, then we usually have sopranos and altos, yes. and we could have two soprano parts, two alto parts. Um, but the chamber choir, how was that made up of? What is It's going to be sopranos, altos, tenors, and basses, right, Jerry? Yes, ma'am. And so do you all perform in other places, not just at the school? Well, during Christmas, we go caroling. Oh, you and do? we also, we go caroling in front of um, elementary schools. We go inside the hallways and carol for the little children there. And it's a lot of fun. And then we go to old people's homes like um, Foster, or I don't know, not Foster. Um, the um, rehabilitation. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, we go there and we go sing for them. Oh, that's wonderful. And how is it working? Um, do you d get to mentor your feeder schools, the middle school, the uh, Annette, do you all go down to? Yeah. You have Henderson, and, and what are your elementaries? Um, Clardy, Burleson, and Salala. And so what would you say to a student that wants to join your choir? What, what would you tell them? How, you know, what are some things to encourage mm -hmm. them? Uh, can you tell me a little bit? I guess I'd say just to keep going with choir in middle school, just to keep working hard, and once they get to high school, they'll have so much fun with it. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's great. Well, I'd like to find out a little bit about about what your plans are for the future. Um, Annette, uh, what what are you planning to do after high school? 
Well, right now I go to Silva Magnet, so I plan on going into the medical field and being a physical therapist. And then um, I guess just have music on the side because it's something that I can't let go of, so uh -huh. I'd keep doing that. That's great. And David, how about yourself? Well, I plan on uh, majoring in music, actually. Wonderful. Be a, a music major for... Uh, so I don't. I really don't know where wherever that will take me. Wherever wherever God takes me, I'll just f hopefully fly with it. That's wonderful. And who can who influenced you? What what brought you to want to major in music? A major role, uh, a major person, a person who took a major role in in my development was um, actually my choir teacher, Mr. Porflet. I have I have him to thank for my love for music, actually. That's wonderful. He is a wonderful musician, and he actually made Allstate as well, yeah. so it's just mm -hmm. a lot of fun. Um, that's great. Nadia, tell me about you. What um, do you plan? Well, like to Annette, do? I want to go into the medical field as a physical therapist, and hopefully I can double major in medicine and music. Like, I really want to pursue it, and I hopefully, hopefully get to be in some of some some operas, get to star in some operas. That's wonderful. Have you thought about music therapy? Are you familiar with that? Yeah, so I, I've heard of it, but I've never really looked into it, but it sounds like a really, like something I'd be interested in. That's wonderful. How about yourself, Jerry? Well, after high school, I was planning to go into the Army with as a EMT. Oh, so great. So my next year, I'm going to probably go into CCTE. Mm -hmm. And once I go into the Army, I'm also going to join the um, Army's choir. The Army's chorus, and then after when I come back from the Army, I'm like Nadia, double major, um, if not um, just a major in medicine and give private lessons to anyone who needs it. Well, I just think that's wonderful, and it's, it's just so exciting, and I hope that I will have many opportunities to hear you. How do you all um, work on your academics? Because I know it takes countless hours. You mentioned that in preparing for the region and for area and for all state, countless hours to rehearse. But um, how about academics? How do you juggle those? Can you tell me a little bit, Nadia? It's just a lot of time management. You have to find like the right times to say no to your friends and say, I have to study because I have all region tomorrow, or I don't know. It's just a, it's a lot of time management, but it's, it's doable. It's really doable. Great. Annette, do you all get to work together as a, not only on academics, do you, do you meet together to work on studies or, you know, and then also working on the music? Well, for the music, we come in before school, after school, during lunch. <laughs> we are yeah. always together. Are you required to do that? No. No. Oh, you just enjoy it that much. Yeah, it's and we just, just to practice, you know, we'll just all come together and practice together, so. Well, it's clearly evident that you all are doing so well, and I just really thank you for sharing that with us. Um, I understand some of you also performed in the, the First Baptist Living the Living Tree is that the what it was Christmas called? Tree. Living Christmas Tree. Living Christmas Tree that was held in December. Mm -hmm. um, how did you get to be involved in that, David? Were you in? Yeah. Um, well, just Mr. Porfley, he said um, they needed some people um, in the Living Christmas Tree, and we said, sure, why not? It's uh, more singing, so and more time to be together. You know. That's wonderful. So. That's wonderful. Uh, Jerry, if you um, had anything to tell us, what ha what has music done for you? It has motivated my life. It has given me a sense of confidence and everything else because now I can sing in front of people, which means I can speak in front of people. I can do pretty much anything I want with this now. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. And Nadia, how about um, what, what do you need to tell Jerry about his upcoming um, experience with the Allstate process? What does he have uh, to look forward to? Be prepared. Be prepared to work, but be also prepared to have like a lot of fun. So then you're going to have three days of rehearsals and yes. then a culminating concert on on that that Saturday. Do you yes. actually get to enjoy San Antonio a little bit? Gosh, yes. <laughs> they give us a lot of time. They give us a lot of time to ourselves because they know I guess we're kids. But yeah, they give us a lot of time. <laughs> well, that's great. <laughs> Well, again, I just thank all four of you for being here and sharing your talent, and I look forward to hearing many, many things about you in the future, so I hope that you will let us know. And we thank you so much for being here on our Focus on the Arts with the El Paso Independent School District. We hope that if you don't know about the programs in visual arts, dance, music, and theater in the various schools, that you will contact the the main office and you can easily find out what's happening in the district as well as our El Paso Independent School District Fine Arts Office. 
Um, our phone number there is 760-8520. Enjoy.